Good morning everyone, welcome to today's video. This is the second video in the anatomy and physiology series and it is going to be about motor units. So the two major things we're going to look at today is what actually is a motor unit and what is the role of a motor unit in conjunction to muscular contractions. So firstly we need to know these definitions. So what I would recommend is getting a pen and paper, writing all of these out as we go through them and then making them into flashcards on the end. A great revision source, I will do a whole video on revision and revision tips, but a great flashcards revision source is Brainscape. It's brilliant because it, it remembers how well you've done on each card and it will bring them back more frequently if you struggle with that one. It's a great way to learn it. Trust me, I've done it before. So firstly, what is a motor unit? It is a motor neuron plus all the muscle fibers it initiates. Um, you'll see what I mean by that later on. A neuron is just a type of nerve cell. Axon, yeah, this is what carries the action potential which we will know as AP from the cell body to the neuromuscular junction. The next thing, neuromuscular junction is where the motor neuron communicates with the muscle fibers across the synapse. The next thing is, well, yeah, what is a synapse? Or a synapse, whichever you want to say it as. What a synapse is, is the, play, is the space between the neuromuscular junction and the skeletal muscle. Finally, for the part one of the definitions, is the motor end plate. So, what the motor end plate is, is the area of muscle fiber which establishes synaptic contact with the motor neuron. So, th this, these are kind of the generic, what you know about the structure of a, you know, motor unit. Well, motor unit. The next kind of thing is kind of the physiology of how it works. So the first one we'll look at is resting potential. Now what resting potential is, is this is where the there is a lower charge inside the neuron than outside the neuron. It's effectively at rest. Action potential is also known as AP as we know, is the electrical impulse carried down the axon. Remember, don't write AP in your exam, write action potential. In your notes, use shorthand where you can because it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to revise things. Next, neurotransmitter. This is the chemical trans these are chemical transmitters which diffuse across the synapse, binding to receptors to initiate muscular contraction. Number four is acetylcholine. What acetylcholine is, is the neurotransmitter released by the neuromuscular junction and diffuses across the synapse or synapse. Finally, the all or nothing law, or the all or nothing principle. The, if the action potential threshold is reached, all the muscle fibers in that motor unit are initiated. If the action, pen, action potential threshold is not reached, then none of the muscle fibers are initiated. So, after we've got all those definitions, what we need to know is a step-by-step -step guide to answering motor unit questions. These are usually four mark questions, and you can, you know, there's usually these seven points. You write four of these, you get the four marks. Literally, what I've always done is just written out the whole process, because I never, you never know with these exams what they're after. I know that sounds pretty contradictory, but, I mean, you do, but I always stressed out way too much, so I always wrote everything out. So this is everything you could write in those questions. So first thing, define what a motor unit is. We know that from earlier. It's the you know a motor neuron plus one of the muscle fibers it initiates. Then you define what resting potential is. You know where the um, charge inside the neuron is smaller than outside the neuron. And then we say how the action potential threshold is reached. So you know it changes inside the neuron is now a greater charge than outside the neuron. The action potential is then carried down the axon to the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction then releases acetylcholine, ACH acetylcholine, that's shorthand. It is, it's not recognized in PE, but it's recognized in other subjects. So this is actually a shorthand, but don't write it in the exam. So acetylcholine then diffuses across the synapse. Acetylcholine then binds to receptors on the motor end plates and all the muscle fibers in that motor unit contract as the action potential threshold was reached. However, if the action potential threshold was not reached, then none of the muscle fibers in that motor unit will contract. So, other things you need to know about motor units. So, the effect of the number of motor units questions. Basically, these next few, you know, paragraphs or numbered, whatever you want to call them, these are just, you can have like two, one to two or three mark questions on these things you know, like state and explain the effects sort of things, quick short things that really do add up in the exam to get you those A's and A stars. So firstly, the effects of the number of motor units recruited. So the greater the strength of the stimulus from the CNS, there are two things that occur. Firstly, the greater the number of motor units that are recruited, and secondly, this will lead to a greater force of muscular contraction. So basically, as say you're in the gym, as you increase the weight, you will increase 
the number of motor units recruited. Why? Because you want to use more muscle fibers. Why? So you can lift the greater weight. Yeah? Think about it. You lift like a, a six kilo dumbbell in the gym, f fairly easy, you know? You lift a twenty kilo dumbbell in the gym, say do a bicep curl for both, very difficult, you know? A lot of you won't have the strength to do it. But you need to recruit those more motor units and more muscle fibers to be able to do it. Next, the effects of the type of motor unit recruited. So basically it, this is just kind of going to be an explain question, like explain how type 1 differs to type 2B, or explain, you know, the variety of the three different muscle types, explain the differences. So basically, type 1 are small and they produce a low force contraction over a long period of time. Type 2A, the size and time of contraction are between type 1A, well, type 1 and type 2B. That's all you need to know. That's why they don't really ask about 2. They normally say between type 1 and type 2B. Finally, type 2B, they are large and produce a large force of contraction over a short period of time. Fairly simple. You just need to memorize this. Again, use Brainscape, honestly. It is a brilliant source for revision. Finally, we will be talking about the effect of synchronization of motor units. So basically, what this means is that not all motor units are recruited at the same time. You know, first type recruited is the type 1, where the force contraction is low. As the you know the force contraction increases, type two A are recruited to be able to you know cope with the increase in you know weight. Let's say in the gym. Finally, if the weight is still you know too large to be you know shifted by just the type one and type two A, you'll be requi recruiting the type two B as the force contraction increases again. So think about it's like here's some extra information. It's like t type two B, they are large. They contain about approximately seven hundred fast glycolytic muscle fibers in there. We will be going into what a fast glycolytic muscle fiber is in the next video. Basically, they're the big, strong, powerful muscle fibers. And type 2A B, type 2B motor units contain approximately 700 of them each. So, thank you all for watching. What I will say is, just remind you of what we have learned in this video. What we have learned is what a motor unit is, what is the role of a motor unit, and how the motor unit carries out its role. In the next video, we will be looking at the types of muscle fibers, the characteristics of each muscle, type of muscle fiber, and different types of muscular contraction. We'll look at things like isometric, isotonic, concentric, isotonic, eccentric, and I'll be explaining what they are to you guys. So, once again, thank you all for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and share this channel with your friends studying A-level PE. Thank you very much.